As fans eagerly await the official title of Jonathan Hickman's mystery Marvel Comics project with Valerio Shidi, Marvel shocked everyone by announcing another 2023 project from Hickman, Ultimate Invasion, with Ultimate's artist Brian Hitch. The four-issue event launching summer 2023 marks Marvel's first official return to the Ultimate line of comics since 2015 Secret Wars ended the universe. We know from Marvel's announcement that the event will focus on Miles Morales and the Maker, two Ultimate Universe favorites who've continued their stories in Marvel's prime Earth-616 universe since, as well as the Illuminati, aka Iron Man, Black Panther, Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, Namor, and a returning Professor X. Throughout Hickman's original use of the Illuminati in New Avengers, Beast was filling that role because Professor X was killed by Cyclops in Avengers vs. X-Men. The return of the Ultimate Universe has been a long time coming. Although I've been advocating for it, I honestly assume Marvel would wait for the 25th anniversary in 2025, and this is one of the most exciting ways it could come back. If you are excited for Ultimate Invasion and want to dig in, I've got for you here a list of curated Fast Track comics to dive in to Ultimate Invasion to give you everything you need to know going forward, as well as some theories about what's to come. This is the road to Ultimate Invasion. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Thank you for listening here on the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel. If you like the podcast, YouTube and website, please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, comment, all that fun stuff helps me out a great deal. Without further ado, let's dig in. Now, the simplest and most comprehensive answer to prepare for Ultimate Invasion is, of course, to read all of what came before via Comic Book Herald's Ultimate Universe reading order. Since the Ultimate Universe is significantly more streamlined than Marvel's sprawling Earth-616, this 15-year history is realistically bingeable. Or you could always check out the My Ultimate Year podcast where we binged and discussed the whole thing. That said, people keep telling me isolating themselves from all human contact in order to read as many comics as possible is not quote-unquote healthy. And although I do not understand that sentiment at all, I hear you. So below, you'll find the curated fast-track road to Ultimate Invasion with only the 10 most essential reads included. We're going to do this puppy chronologically as well as we go through the history of the Ultimate Universe. What's the most important? What do you need to take away heading in to Ultimate Invasion? My first pick Ultimates Volume 1. You can make a healthy case that Ultimate Spider-Man is the better launch series, but Mark Miller and Brian Hitch's Ultimates undeniably shape the tone, style, attitude, and purpose of the Ultimate Universe more than anything, not to mention the outsized influence it's had on Marvel 616 and the MCU since launching in 2002. Hitch's widescreen cinematic realism didn't originate here. That visual transformation really begins in DC Wildstorm's The Authority, but in modernizing the Avengers, Hitch cemented his fingerprints on the visual aesthetics of superheroes of the 2000s. So, if you want to get to know the team, an Ultimate Universe Nick Fury, an Ultimate Cap Iron Man, Thor, nothing will indoctrinate you better than Ultimates. Love it or hate it, it's an absolutely crucial part of modern Marvel history. From there, we're going to jump way ahead, and remember, if you love the Ultimate Universe, dive in and read more, but otherwise we're going to jump ahead to the Ultimate Enemy Trilogy, a significant number of ideas, characters, and concepts that fans think of as Jonathan Hickman's all actually began from the pen of Brian Michael Bendis, one of the most crucial players, if not the most crucial, of Marvel throughout the 2000s. There's Marvel's Illuminati. Bendis and Hickman co-writing the launch to Secret Warriors, and the transformation of Ultimate Universe Reed Richards into The Maker, which happens here, or at least the groundwork is set here, in the Ultimate Doomsday comics. Bendis' influence is all over the Ultimate Universe, particularly across Ultimate Spider-Man and the co-creation of Miles Morales, so it's easier to forget that he also sets the stage for the descent and return of Ultimate Reed as the maker, who's going to be, it seems, the central or a central player in Ultimate Invasion. 
From there, let's bounce back to Earth-616 for new Avengers Illuminati. Speaking of Bendis, his Illuminati miniseries with Jim Chung is hugely influential and frankly great fun. Since we know the maker will be working alongside or against a reformed Illuminati in Ultimate Invasion, this is well worth a revisit. We have not seen, really, the Illuminati together, or at least you know their story been told, since Secret Wars for the most part. Now we've seen some, some hints here and there in the pages of Hickman's X-Men, House of X, Powers of Ten, and then the final run on X-Men. But otherwise, this group has been apart for a little while, so we are definitely due for a good classic return of the Illuminati. Remember, too, this Bendis and Chung mini, this is the only time you'll see Professor X as part of the Illuminati rather than Hickman's sort of famous use of the team in New Avengers. Next up, we're going to jump to Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, a.k.a the debut of Miles Morales. Miles gets his first ongoing series by Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli following the death of Spider-Man arc, all of which is very good. Given Miles' prominence in media and this event, you could certainly just jump straight from here to the complete comic book herald Miles Morales reading order. And again, all these reading orders that I mentioned will be listed in the show notes. Apart from the origins, it's also worth checking out Spider-Men, a crossover between Miles Morales and Peter Parker on Earth-616. It's a great read and one of the earliest examples of the universes crossing over, which of course is a big part of what seems to be happening here in Ultimate Invasion. Getting back to the Hickman of it all, you gotta read Ultimate Comics Ultimates. For about a year and a half, Jonathan Hickman and Isad Ribich were given the keys to the Ultimate Kingdom, and all they did was create the most interesting comics the universe had seen in a decade. Unfortunately, due to poor sales and some bad timing, the book launched right into DC's New 52, which ate up a lot of attention. Ultimate Comics Ultimates only lasted 12 issues before changing creative hands. Nonetheless, in the span of those excellent comics, Hickman and Ribich developed The Maker, one of the most captivating villains in the Ultimate Universe, and expressed a clear vision for what the Ultimates could be. Hickman has gone on record in an interview saying he wished he could have written this book for 100 issues, and I can't wait to see some of those ideas return in Ultimate Invasion. It's definitely one of the great what-ifs and untapped story potentials in Marvel Comics history. From there, keep the Hickman gravy train rolling with Avengers, New Avengers, and Secret Wars. Listen, I have Hickman's Marvel Universe saga ranked as the fourth best comic of all time on the best best comics of all time list in the world. For the love of Doom, just go read it. From there, post-Secret Wars, things get really interesting. I would recommend first jumping to Ultimates 2. The relevant Ultimate Universe comics after 2015 Secret Wars get pretty interesting because you wind up with basically three characters surviving in significant roles in Earth-616. Miles, the Maker, and uh, Jimmy Hudson, but we really don't need to worry about that. Al Ewing is the first to take on The Maker, incorporating the character into New Avengers and a little bit U.S. Avengers, and eventually their relaunched Earth-616 version of Ultimates. Now, this whole run of Ultimates is well worth reading, one of the best post-Secret Wars Marvel comics in my view, but it's in Ultimates 2, which is kind of labeled Ultimates Squared, but just type in Ultimates 2 in Marvel Unlimited, you'll find it, where The Maker and the Ultimate Universe really take hold. Given Ewing and Hickman's recent connections through Marvel's X-Men comics and working together on Hickman's Three Worlds, Three Moons, his ongoing Substack project, this would be my pick for one of the most likely continuity connections with Ultimate Invasion and The Maker. Here's a less likely continuity connection, but one that might be super relevant. Spider-Man 2, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Here's the thing. Spider-Man 2 is not good. <laughs> I recommended Spider-Men earlier. Love that series. Great mini. Same writer, Brian Michael Bendis. By the time he got to Spider-Men 2, nah, nah, it just wasn't happening. That said, it does introduce the Miles Morales of Earth-616. So there's a Miles Morales in the Ultimate Universe. The question then is, well, who's Miles in Earth-616? We get the answer. It kind of stinks. <laughs> but that character then goes on to become a character called Ultimatum in the Miles Morales run written by Solid and Ahmed. This version of Miles is pals with a kingpin and learns how to travel to the Ultimate Universe. So on those grounds alone, right, anyone traveling back and forth between the Ultimate Universe and Earth-616, it's a unique character worth considering with any kind of return to the Marvel Ultimate Universe and a significant presence for Miles Morales. Speaking 
of characters who travel between universes. The winner for least likely continuation of the Ultimate Universe definitely goes to Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's celebrated run on Venom. For reasons that frankly still confound me, Cates and Stegman tied the Maker into their great symbiote revamp, all of which builds to some extremely significant foreshadowing in Venom number 26 and Venom number 35, and this is for the series that began in 2018. Actually, calling it significant is an understatement. It quite literally teases the coming Ultimate Universe invasion from the Maker. They use the words invasion. <laughs> now, you'll need to read the full run for that issue to pay off in full, but unless you just want to skip to what's going on with the Maker, like, that's a pretty reasonable approach. There's basically four pages in Venom number 35, with Eddie Brock in his new Venom Captain Universe guys teasing what's to come from the Maker in this ultimate invasion. We'll talk a little bit about the Maker during the theory time, but in Venom, in issue number 26, shortly after applying the ultimate Venom symbiote to himself, Maker is blasted to Earth-1610, aka the Ultimate Universe, which all we see of it is that it's horribly on fire. Seemingly some sort of apocalypse has happened, you know, Secret Wars, and there are signs all over billboards asking, where are the Ultimates? The Maker, of course, has plans. The final read I would recommend, heading into Ultimate Invasion, House of X and Powers of Ten. Now, we have it on record from a question I asked in an Adventures in Poor Taste interview next men Monday that Hickman will not be sneaking in any major developments for Marvel's mutants since he famously left the project in 2021. But I'd still recommend the X-Men revitalization purely in terms of style and approach. I think we can expect Ultimate Invasion to employ a lot of the same tricks, both structurally, data pages, here we come, and narratively, and purposefully, right? After all, check out this quote from Hickman on what to expect. We also thought the very idea of Ultimate Comics needed to be inverted from what the original universe was. We wanted this to be something that could really only exist in the comic space, a new way of thinking about and enjoying a new version of the Marvel Universe. Remember, at this stage in a celebrated career, Hickman's Marvel purpose is to relaunch and revitalize and have the big idea that is a launching pad for Marvel's biggest properties. That's what we can expect. That's what House of X and Powers of Ten did for X-Men in some incredible ways. I think Ultimate Invasion will try to do similar things for the Ultimate Universe, which brings us to theory time. What is coming in Ultimate Invasion? What can we expect from this event, from what is quoted by Marvel PR as a surprising new chapter for Ultimate Comics, where the maker is trying to restore the Ultimate Universe and the Illuminati must form once again to stop him from his plans to destroy or perhaps rebuild the universe. Okay, to do this, I think we have to look at the maker as a central player here. What are the maker's motivations? Ultimate Universe Reed Richards, what is this character trying to do? Well, really, the maker just wants to create his perfect city with his perfect children, right? This evolves over the past decade to wanting to create the perfect world or the perfect universe, or in the case of Ultimates 2, basically the perfect multiverse, etc. But this is a big brained genius character who thinks everyone is beneath them and that they can get it right. In a lot of ways, it's like what if the high evolutionary used to be in the Fantastic Four and was the most successful supervillain the Ultimate Universe had ever seen, right? You have this former hero, semi-reformed, for the events of Ultimate Universe Cataclysm, um, who kind of, you know, they think they're doing the right thing, or they think they're doing the most important thing, which is creating a perfect society or universe, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that this maker is now back in the Ultimate Universe, their home world, and seems excited about it. That's the last we've seen of them, again, at the end of Venom number 26. The other crucial, make, crucial maker details here, post-Secret Wars... Owen Reese, a.k.a. the Molecule Man, a huge player in Secret Wars, puts slices of the Maker across the multiverse. So there's a Maker with the same mission of restoring the multiverse and making a stronger eternity in this reality in every single universe. From the underrated 2019 Future Foundation mini, which plays with this, here's a quote. The Maker became a being with a thousand bodies and one mind connected across realities. So Ultimate Universe Reed Richards as they stand in the current Marvel Universe continuity is completely unique, like one of these cosmic entities, like an eternity in the multiverse where they are connected across the entire Marvel multiverse. So I think the simplest expectation of what Ultimate Invasion will be 
is it's going to be the maker succeeding in some capacity, setting the stage for a launch of Ultimate Comics coming in the wake of this event, right? Otherwise, why do it? I think we can fully expect a restoration of some Ultimate Universe because Ultimate Invasion will be a setup and then other creators will jump in and relaunch an Ultimate line of comics that Marvel can hope to sell. For the record, I don't expect Hickman will be writing many of these ongoings. I think the role, again, is going to be the event size kickoff and template for what a universe can be. But... I think that's probably oversimplified for what this is going to be, you know, in Ultimate Invasion. I don't think it will simply be, oh, the restoration of Ultimate Universe, it's back. Because you have a multiversal maker who has tried and nearly merged realities to reform his own in Ultimates 2, came close, by the way, is he going to be content with a single Ultimate Universe restored? I don't think so. So instead, I bet we'll be looking at a new era of ultimate comics that span the multiverse, okay? I think the new vision, because if you're looking at the quote from Hickman, they're looking to do something that can only be done in comics. What is that? Is that an ultimate universe that is a fresh entry point for new readers? That's not particularly unique. And like they say in the quotes, that was done 20 years ago, okay? Does it need to be that modernized again? What do you do instead? You look for ultimate comics that span the multiverse. What does this mean? It means you can have a variety of visions and versions of ultimate universes in different creative hands. How about allowing for creator visions across a variety of Earths? Here's what I'm thinking. Al Ewing's ultimate universe. Rom V's ultimate universe. Marjorie Liu's ultimate universe. Donny Cates ultimate universe. Tom Taylor's ultimate universe. Bring in big name creators and have a multiverse of ultimates that are specifically tied to unique comics creator visions. That is something that is unique to comics. I think it works with what the multiversal maker has been to this point in time. And personally, it has me more excited about a potential quote unquote relaunch of ultimate comics in a way that is unique and inverts the original intention and purpose of the ultimate universe. So. That's my theory about what's to come in Ultimate Invasion. I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think is coming in Ultimate Invasion in the show notes. Let me know if you think there are other reads that are absolutely essential, getting ready for this, other things that you're hyped about, thoughts, feelings, emotions, problems. And, well, you know, get them all out. Get them all out, all those feelings in the comments. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Again, I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald online. Like, subscribe, share the channel, all that fun stuff. Again, helps me out a ton. A thank you to the patrons in the Mysterious Benefactors tier. One of your benefits is you get shouted out here on the channel by name on the videos that I do on CBH. Thanks so much to Dan Taylor, Donnie Geralds, Arun Gupta, Edson Sierra, Treed91, Joshua Bentley, Chris Mervica, Adam, Mike Solomons, Matt Mahoney, and Jesse W. Thanks so much for your support. Thank you all for listening. And always... Enjoy the comics.